So, uh, ooh, that worked. Okay. <laughs> we going to talk about it. What are we going to talk about? Well, it is Amazon. Um, filing uh, to stop or block the antitrust suit that's going on against them. So, just a bit of history. So, Lena Khan is a person who's just 33 years of age. One of the youngest people working for Joe Biden in the federal, in the federal government right now. And she is the head of the FTC. What's the FTC? Well, it's the Federal Trade Commission. Basically, when a company is being sued or whatever, they're the ones that handle it. Well... It turns out that this woman had, at the age of 23 or a little bit earlier, written an essay, written an essay about how Amazon uh, was, um, and that's that's my, you know, uh, you know, my my text messages, but um, basically she'd written an essay saying that Amazon was too powerful. And that it was monopolizing and all kinds of other things, right? Well, now she's the head of the FTC. And, you know, you this is called one of the rocket careers of people, in, of this person, because in our federal government. Because typically at 33, you're still working in the lower ranks of the government. Usually when you get to your 40s, your 50s, even your 60s, you're getting, then you become even more. Well, here's the thing, right? Amazon... Had um, John Bar John Barnett, I think is his name, write a request to get her to recuse herself from the Amazon uh, antitrust lawsuit that's going on. Now, the biggest thing here is um, John Barnett was uh, handling antitrust against Amazon for the U.S. government or antitrust in general for the U.S. government under George H., uh, not George H., but George W. Bush, because under George H. W. Bush, Amazon didn't exist uh, at all. But they he was handling that. Now he works for Amazon. And what he's claiming is, well, this person can't be impartial because uh, he because she wrote something about Amazon 10 years ago or so. Meanwhile, so she can't have an opinion but he can have an opinion. He can be impartial because he works for Amazon. Got it. Now, here's the first thing I'll say, right? Imagine that that was the law that people went with, which is, um, which is you cannot have an opinion if you're handling some part of the law. Look, I know the law. You're supposed to go by the facts. You're supposed to go by what's in front of you. But you can have an opinion. It happens. I know Republicans have gone mad at the FBI having to Oh, my God. <laughs> they have opinions. You have an opinion, asshole. And you're still in Congress, right? And your opinions don't really matter. But that's kind of the law. Imagine that kind of uh, section of the law, right? Of asset of law. Now, with Amazon, you, how are they not a monopoly? Look, when you have Amazon that basically you have companies that want to sell products on Amazon, whether it's books, whether it's vacuum cleaners, toilet paper, cabinets, couches, technology products, you know, technology products, you have to... Uh, when you go on Amazon's website to do it, you have to sign a contract that basically says that you will basically give Amazon a part of your company, technical or whatever, and that and and they're just gonna own part of your company. You're gonna give it to them. The Amazon's not saying, "Hey, I'll give you twenty million dollars for your company. I'll give you five million dollars. I'll give you ten thousand dollars if you're a really small company." No, they don't do that. They just say if you want to do business on our website, you business uh, you have to uh, you have to give us control of your company, which you might fine. Okay, fine, whatever. You might get rewards by you know rewarded by be by your stocks being given a higher value, right? A higher value, but because it's under Amazon, obviously it's gonna skyrocket. But you now no longer have the control over your company that you once had. So. In, in a sense, the people who signed this don't have any power. And obviously, knowing that they're the second biggest and largest employer besides Walmart, they have no choice. They literally have no choice. 
So what do they do? They go for it. Now, there are a thousand. And then Amazon, what do they do? As soon as they start seeing your products go off the shelf, off the virtual shelves and they realize holy crap these products their products are being successful what they'll do is they'll create they'll duplicate your product create a new one and brand it as their own and then what they'll do is they'll put you at the bottom of the algorithm because well people aren't going to search for you anymore if amazon puts themselves at the top make it cheaper make it the amazon brand obviously a lot of people trust amazon for some stupid reason and there you go and, and they'll make you be on the third, second, third, or even the tenth page. Let's be real. A lot of people are not going to go past the first page. I'm kind of guilty of that. But I kind of do sometimes because I'm very picky. I, I, I want to have something that's quality. And so, you know, th- this is where Amazon... You know, this whole, oh, we, we don't want this person uh, to be in there. They need to recuse himself. They're just trying to make sure that they don't get their asses sued or held accountable. They literally in 2020, they were 51% of all retails. And by the way, Amazon is not a real retail store. They're not. They might try and act like they are, but they ain't a real retail store. People have to know that. And so... You know, look, Amazon is as American as apple pie, but it's about time someone has to hold them accountable. Somebody. They have unfair working conditions, unfair working environments, poor wages, and, you know, uh, they are super aggressive in uh, downplaying everything. So, look, I hope that the antitrust suit can continue, and I hope that this request can uh, be denied because it's honestly stupid.